Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. Today we reach the fourth and final Sunday of Advent, and as we've been lighting our candles, we've journeyed through hope, peace and joy. Today is perhaps the greatest gift of all, love. Please do join in by lighting a candle at home. And as we light this candle, we pray. Dear God, as our Advent pilgrimage draws to completion, grant us the courage to share your love. Love for the unexpected challenge, love for the vulnerable one, love for the presence of God. Amen. We continue as we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ashley is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he'd resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the birth of Christ, the light brought into the darkness of the world and the gift of salvation. But today, we reflect on how we might receive that gift in our ordinary lives, into our hopes, fears, sorrows and joys, but also our human habits and expectations. This Gospel passage comes after Matthew has placed Jesus in a straight genealogical line stretching from Abraham through 14 generations, finishing with Joseph, son of Jacob, and the husband of Mary. We are now told that Mary and Joseph are engaged, the first stage of marriage to be completed later by formal wedding ceremony. So they are already in a contractual relationship, and to break it would bring shame on both families, although Mary would have been the one who was most at risk of social rejection and possible legal penalty. But Matthew wants us to know that Mary is pregnant through the Holy Spirit, not by Joseph, and that she remains a virgin until after she gives birth to Jesus. Now much has been written about Mary when she learns of her miraculous pregnancy. Traditionally, her reaction has been seen as a, a meek submission to the will of God, but more recently, scholars have suggested that perhaps we should see her agreement as a matter of consent, a deliberate decision to comply with God's intentions. And so the Magnificat is read not just as humble thanksgiving, but as part of Mary's understanding that to say yes to the birth of God's Son will transform the world. But here, 
Matthew gives us something different, less prophetic, but in some ways more intimately human, as we are invited to look more closely at Joseph. So his decision to accept the unexpected child into his family is different to, but no less important than, Mary's decision. Her grace and courage is mirrored by his. We know surprisingly little about Joseph. Matthew describes him as righteous. That's a term that would normally be used to describe somebody who follows the law, and by law, he is entitled to break the marriage agreement. But perhaps we can also think of him as righteous in that he lives by a moral code, one that includes the compassion that drives him to protect Mary from the worst consequences of the scandal. He is a human being, acting rationally and even kindly within his cultural and personal circumstances. But Joseph's world is about to be changed again, this time in ways beyond human imagination. What seemed a social disaster in the light of day becomes a divine mystery in the night, when he stops thinking in human ways and opens himself up to God's presence. He has to take the step that we're all invited to take. He has to trust the divine revelation brought by God's messenger, and he has to trust Mary. Joseph has to let go of his doubts and fears, abandon his normal expectations, and allow a miracle to overturn his life. And that letting go changes him, just as responding to the call of faith changes us. Faith cannot exist without doubt, and faith is trust in things that we do not understand. It is not called a leap of faith for nothing. Now, we can puzzle over the conundrum of a virgin birth. Possible answers are that it's a miracle, a mistranslation, or just the product of centuries of human tradition. Perhaps we can just say that the Bible speaks to us all in different ways. But today, I want to suggest that we should not be transfixed by the, the strangeness of Jesus' conception. Instead, we should be transfixed by the greatest miracle of all, that our God chose to be incarnate on earth, to live among us and to share our human condition, that he chose to live in relationship with us, and most surprisingly, perhaps, to suffer with us and for us. And so, in this final week of Advent, we are invited to join Joseph and to welcome God into our own lives our own family, to commit ourselves to loving him and loving each other, to open ourselves to the surprising, the inconvenient, the transformative presence of God. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.
Penny is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. Come, Lord, be known in your church, for without you we have no message, no power. Come fill us with your presence, that we may proclaim your peace. Make us alert to your coming, that we may reveal your glory in all the world. We pray for those who walk in darkness, that they may see your light. Emmanuel, our God, you are with us. Come, Lord, and give peace to your world. Disperse the clouds of war and violence, of calamity and disaster. Let your power and your glory be revealed to all. We pray for all who care for and protect others, for the police, hospital workers and ambulance workers, for firefighters and all who work in the dark hours of the night. Emmanuel, our God, you are with us. Come, Lord, be known in our homes and our communities, that they may reflect your glory, that we may rejoice in each other's presence, that we may live in love and compassion with all. Emmanuel, our God, you are with us. Come, Lord, to all who are unable to cope at this time, to all who are weighed down with troubles. We pray for the ill and for those who have care of them. We pray for the depressed and the anxious. Give comfort and hope in their troubles. Emmanuel, our God, you are with us. Come, Lord, save us and we shall be saved. We pray for friends and loved ones departed, especially for those who have died alone. May they now rejoice in your presence and your glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the peace. The Father has sent the Son to dwell among us, that we may know and share his peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for our service today. There will be another online service next week for Christmas Day. If you can join us for worship in person, there will be Christmas services at each of our churches. Details of how to join our online and in-person services are on the bulletin and our website. And don't forget that all of our churches are open each day between 10am and 4pm for personal prayer and quiet reflection. And so our service ends now with a blessing. God is with you, a light to your path, a companion on the road, a friend for your journey, and a sure support and presence at all times. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.